let me now open the floor to, um, we have about half an hour, Dan Supercharger will have to go at about 11.25. Uh, so the floor is open for questions, comments. Uh, there's some technicalities, anything you want to ask. We have a constitution drafter here, uh, government uh, insider, uh, practitioner, uh, independent academic, and a veteran political analyst, constitutional court judge, and so on. Um, thank you to the panelists for um, a useful walkthrough uh, where we might be headed. And um, if I had a vote, I guess I'd vote for Dr. Titina as Prime Minister. But, um, but uh, listen, um, my question is probably best directed to uh, Dr. Panatan, um, given that you are uh, in, in the um, operations, if you like. And it's really just a, if you could elaborate a little bit more about how, how and when you think some of these uh, political space might be open for political gatherings and those sort of things. So when political groups would be able to come together in, in, in larger um, gatherings, uh, discuss policy, discuss uh, how to move ahead for themselves as political parties. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I think the uh, NCPO and the security agencies uh, now uh, continue to, to uh, evaluate uh, the possibilities uh, of uh, relaxing some of these rules uh, much more closely than uh, August 7. Uh, I think uh, that, that is now going on. Uh, the, the, the lifting or moving of certain cases from the uh, which we call this one, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, invitation for for the uh, for the uh, comments of uh, of uh, key leaders are also are also uh, in the progress. I'm not so certain that uh, invitation for comments will be uh, quite uh, well received, uh, but. Uh, we have seen some of the uh, uh, requests to the NCPO you know, for more activities uh, on the table. Uh, they would like to, uh, uh, would like to uh, uh, be in the area more uh, yeah, openly, uh, rather than going to the usual practice like uh, making merit at the temples or, or, uh, or visiting some of the commercial size. So, so I think the, the, the evaluation will be ongoing. But what troubled us uh, in Tamasat uh, is that uh, we, we thought that uh, at the university's uh, function, university functions, uh, things would be less confrontational. Uh, that's why more, uh, in the past, more opening of the spaces on campus are allowed. But now the military is now, uh, since that incident at right, Tamasa, began to reevaluating uh, the uh, uh, the practices. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure how much will be uh, an impact on the uh, October activities. Uh, I think the October month in Thailand is a political month, really. Uh, so, so you need to handle it very well. But uh, I'm I'm quite concerned that uh, uh, some of these people who went to Tamasat uh, may, may create a, a, a much more concern to the security agencies. I, did, I, I think what, what I'm trying to say is they need to talk. They need to really strike a good deal with the NCPO now uh, in, in order to handle more large gatherings. I think the, uh, in principle, uh, gatherings on campus are allowed uh, on top of the gathering on the virtual space as Excellency may notice already, I think uh, mentioned to you a few times that uh, in Thailand we have more than 500 uh, satellite TVs. Uh, we have uh, more than, uh, used to be 6,000 community radio stations. We have uh, more than 30 digital TVs and we have very active uh, yeah. social media. Uh, Prime Minister have been uh, reading these reports uh, uh, very, very day, every day. It explains why he's quite upset uh, about these reports because these space are very open, very aggressive, 
I am I'm very much, I'm very much uh, uh, in certain ways violent still, uh, but that's allowed uh, uh, for the time being. Uh, but uh, once you want to move from the virtual space to a real space, uh, it's still you need to you need to you need to uh, uh, work together much more. So I'm, I, I will stop here. But uh, I we will continue to. To, to monitor this, uh, we will continue to 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 uh, look for suggestions, uh, constructive suggestions, uh, and it's, I think it's a national community, uh, and 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 other uh, and we have uh, also very active uh, civil society organization. I I, I this slightly agree with Chan Pandit that uh, after election there will be less role of the CSOs. Uh, my hometown, as we counted last time in the south. We have more than 500 CSOs you know, on, on the ground. You know, uh, only 88 international uh, CSOs registered with us, uh, IGOs, NGOs, uh, CSOs. But uh, on the ground, really, they are much more active, much more dynamic. We cannot do away with them. I, I don't think any rules or regulations must accommodate them. So if there are good, good uh, suggestions uh, on, on from the CSOs I, I, to the CNCPO, I think they'll be very much uh, interested in looking to that. Would it be fair to say that the government's handling and treatment of political gatherings and political space will not be a, a kind of an open-ended allowance uh, or bracket, uh, but more conditional, uh, case by case? Uh, would that be kind of uh, correct to say? Uh, I think overall uh, concept is not to go back to the turmoil uh, to maintain stability, like I just suggest, suggested. Uh, once you have crashes on, on the streets, uh, it will create a very negative uh, uh, or hiccup feelings among the uh, public. I think the public approval of the Deputy Prime Minister handling uh, stability, security is very high, too high in, in many senses. I mean, this expectation is too high, uh, you know, uh, in this day and age, no one can be that secure. Not even uh, countries that are most committed to security, they, they're not that secure. Uh, so, uh, but overall, I think concept is to, to make sure that you don't have violence returned uh, on, uh, on the streets or on the, on the ground, uh, in the sense that people are thinking that now, here we go again. So, so I think that, that is our concept. But in partic particular treatments of, of, of different cases, number one, you see these NCPO are more flexible toward students, academics. I think that they're very clear that independent academics and, and students are allowed. Uh, not those academics who often call red shirts or yellow shirts. Not those students who often go to these uh, embassies, you know, and receive one-sided uh, opinion. Uh, not there's uh, academics uh, who, as you say, in certain article quoted on one side, but 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 well-grounded academic, which are less and less these days. Uh, people choose sides, uh, and, but how to bring people who are in the middle? Uh, we have seen students writing uh, with uh, certain groups of. Uh, polit politicians, in general, they are okay, you know, they are learning, but uh, the NCPO are maybe getting nervous at why these students are associated with this group too much, why at that group so much, why at this country so much, at that country so much, why this academy, for example, after listening to five hours of government press, one well-known block quoted so-called independent academic, which is not, he's not. He associated with, uh, with one side, but that quote is from, in that article, independent academic. And what he said is, nothing has been achieved in the last two years. Nothing, zero, zero, he mentioned, have been achieved. That kind of comment, uh, when you allow the other side will be rising up, crashing with that side, with that kind of comment. Or, if you observe one of a very promising uh, politician from one party, 
I, I won't name names. But he said at the foreign correspondent club, Ajahn Supachai constitution is no good, 100% bad. 100% bad. And of course, that comment will incite the other side to come out attacking him. You see? Uh, that, I think, is a concern of the NCPO. If you allow that space, uh, if these two groups agree not to attack each other. But so far, that comment has been this way. Uh, it's still reflecting, as I just said, an unsettling uh, uh, divisiveness, divisions, uh, especially in the academic, uh, certain academic and press communities. Uh, but on the ground, people are just different. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, their the mood is quite different. On the ground, certain key young generation at Tamasa, you see, the, the two that compromise already and talk more progressively uh, are the new trend that the NCPO are now focusing on. I, maybe I can just follow up on what John Titinan said about this government being, or this regime being rather unique, seeing itself as being benevolent and enlightened. Um, Kun uh, Panitan, you're, you're, I guess you're the insider up there. Uh, can, you, can you tell us what you see as kind of unique about these people? Why, you know, I, for the economic reforms, they obviously are listening to technocrats in a big way. But I mean, where, where is the vision thing coming from? Um, and Kun uh, Suchit, maybe you can comment on that too, because Prem, I think, saw himself as being rather benevolent and enlightened. Uh, um, is, is there a Prem hangover in this uh, government as well? Is, uh, does, is Prem directing things in any way still? Uh, so Chapai Tan, to the extent that they have these reforms and so on, uh, where do they get the ideas from? Unlike the past, you know, they are, the military is running the country directly. So you have the colonels, the colonels and the major generals, they are the, the, the communications team. You know, they're not uh, civilians. And uh, yet they have these reforms that uh, are a bit uh, more than anticipated by many people. And Ajahn uh, Jacob, uh, on Peter's question, the civil military relations that we saw in the 70s, 80s, civil military relations that we saw in the 80s, how different are they to today? Well, yeah. the, in the 80s, you see, I would say that the, the civil society's organizations were rather weak, and political parties, you see, uh, also uh, fragile because we didn't have any big uh, political parties, large political party has enough seat to to want uh, the majority seat in the house. Uh, so this is the point that why they agree to allow the military to nominate anyone who would be able to become prime minister. And the thing is, you see, uh, we just uh, uh, at that time, you see, uh, the country needs some sort of stability, and uh, no leadership would be uh, quite uh, promising than those from the military. This is one of the things that I would like to point out. And the other thing is to see, uh, the characteristic of General Graham is quite unique in the sense that he's a clean-handed, that he's soft-spoken, He's quite humble. He knows how to run the country, but he never wants to say in public that he knows. One thing that he didn't know much is about the economy. So he trusts, he trusts people like Ajahn Sanok Unangun, uh, like uh, Ajahn Virapung, and a number of uh, good groups of economists seem to be solidly working behind him, including uh, Kun Kosik from the, uh, the, the who, uh, who used to be at the bank, bank of bank, and he passed away already. So this group of people, uh, we call it a technocrat. Uh, General Graham used technocrat quite a lot in terms of put forward the economy of the country. So and that uh, he tried to protect himself as a clean-handed politician in order to make it clear that uh, the country need to have a less corrupt government, but. Coming to this situation is quite different. It's quite different that the CSOs are very active. Political parties seem to be well established in, in, in some area, like a poor type in, uh, in the north, and in the northeast, a Democrat used to be in the south. But if uh, they might be able to restore 
uh, their support from the in, in the south back as well. So so it's not very easy for anyone who try to run the country ignoring the the political parties. Uh, so I would say that if there were outsider to become a, uh, a prime minister, he needed uh, to try to win the support uh, from the parliament, which of course very difficult. But he might be able to get support from the parliament than those who are in the parliament itself. You see, my point is, you see, if you had to nominate three persons in the elections uh, to be nominated prime minister, right? Okay. And uh, if I were asked, uh, you would like my party to put your name in the list, in the candidate list of being prime ministers, I would say no. Because I don't want to be criticized before you being appointed prime minister. Once the, your name list, you see, come out in the public, in election campaign, that you are the people of this, you, the candidates of this, of this party, then a very prominent figure would want themselves to be allowed to put into the, uh, into the picture. So only those belong to the party would be nominated. That's of course, we'll never get any support from the, all the parties to get uh, how many votes, uh, five, uh, three, seven, it's not very easy at all. So, you have to be outsiders, or to become prime minister. And can you name it? The outsider who would be more eligible than could produce to be prime minister? I cannot see at the moment. Yeah, believe me, yeah, it's a real politics. So, so, uh, so this situation is very totally different in terms of political atmosphere, political environment, so on and so forth. And also, the, you have to listen more to the international uh, 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 environment as well. You see, uh, during general primacy, there's no, uh, there was no anti-military uh, among the West, um, among the EU, so on and so forth. Uh, who, um, Mrs. Thatcher came in to visit General Prem, shaking hand, uh, and also uh, and all the leaders of the of the West also congratulate General Prem as a prime minister. So there's no ill feeling against military dominated at the moment. That we call it semi democracy. People seem to believe that we need that at that time. Now the government need to convince both at home and abroad that we still need this kind, this kind of democracy, at least for a time being, at least for a time being, to move the country forward, to reconcile the divisiveness between the country and to reform the country. But if you give it power back to the, the real, uh, to the liberal democracy and having uh, elected politician to become prime minister. People don't believe that we would be in good shape to get going in terms of reform. But so foreign relations uh, back in the 80s, Cold War, uh, very different than now. Sure. Think, yeah. So uh, Washington, for example, very close with the Prem government. Um, the economy also was different. The Thai economy in the 1980s was really on its way up. Up, up after the 1985 Plaza Accord, and the, we ended up with the Eastern, Eastern Seaboard development uh, through the NESDB yeah. and so on. Yeah. The economy, because we changed the structure of the, our economy, yeah, instead of relying heavily on agricultures, the yeah, rice, the uh, rubbers, tin, and uh, tapioca, corn, and so on and so forth, we rely more on the uh, industrial products. Uh, to, to be export, as well as the tourism. General Prems to promote a lot of tourism within the country. And this, that's why we became, during this period, we became the fifth tiger of Asia. Now, I don't know which tiger we are now at the moment, but at that time, we are fifth tiger. We, uh, there are those who are ahead, uh, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, South Korea, and then the people said, Thailand. 
and that happened in 1980s when we had uh, uh, two digitals growth rate 11 10 11 percent of growth rate yeah, so Thailand 4.0 is the, uh, the, the contemporary answer to that, the, 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 the attempt to recapture uh, the 80s through Thailand 4.0. Dr. Tan, so Peter's question about, you know, the military seeing themselves, the ruling general, general seeing themselves as benevolent, enlightened, but not only that, but <coughs> dutiful and duty-bound to do what they're doing. Where are they getting the ideas, you know, what, what's motivating them? Yeah. Peter, you never fail to... Uh, Post difficult questions, uh, difficult to answer, but interesting question. Uh, uh, I think if you observed closely after Prem era, uh, 30 years have passed. Not much has been written on things have changed. Things have changed after Prem in terms of politics, in terms of economics, uh, in terms of social in a very comprehensive, in a very analytical way. Yeah. Because things were smooth, things were very, uh, very uh, rosy. And when things began to turn bad, like 1997, they focused and zeroed in on just a few things. Uh, not as comprehensive as it used to be. Uh, of course, that's a subject of my next book. Uh, 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 30 years, uh, what went on in those 30 years? But what went on, not not in the academic terms, but what went on in the society. I think, Peter, uh, the society, the Thai society, the Thai public, had uh, accumulated experience enough uh, to uh, make the right decisions in many ways. I think this fact is neglected by many analysts. Who, who are we to tell them that they don't know about constitution? They have been through more constitution than most countries. Who, who are we to tell them that how to handle the military? They have pushed the military out and in for a few times, more than many of us in our lifetime in the West. You see, who, who are we to tell them that there is a space? Yeah. Some of them said they already know enough about your constitution. Uh, who are we? We are from the notion that we need to educate them, we need to tell them, we need to engage them. But the Thai public may not be, may not be that way, I don't know. Uh, that including the military leaders. Uh, I remember 20 years ago when a young colonel came to my class. Now he's a prime minister. He asked a lot of questions. He stood up, interrupted my lecture, and asked a lot of questions that I looked at my notes. Uh, the same questions that he's now have to implement uh, changes on those questions. I even joked to him that you have not changed in the last 20 years when you came to my class. He was laughing. Uh, and that military uh, leaders and groups of leaders uh, are now uh, in the system. They have experienced uh, uh, crises, up and downs. They have observed political party leaders uh, making decisions. Some of them have involved deeply in the last few years in the decision making. Enough to uh, gain the knowledge, not from the public itself, but as an insider. I think that's number two, uh, Peter. They, they are not only just like us have accumulated experience, but they are insiders for the last uh, uh, few uh, years, some of them for the last decade. So, and lastly, of course, thanks to my friends who are on the other side, yeah. these different opinions, when you take the noises out, you know, the less compassionate noise, Aggressive violence. No, I remember. I told my, I told my, my colleague who on the opposite side that first I hear you, I listen to you every night. But did you hear me? Did you listen to what we do? And she said, I don't have time. So the opinion from from the other side about what the government, not this government, Thaksin, Apisit, and the youth. Some chai, what the government have been doing? Have they listened? In, have they been listening enough? Look at, no, not really. Uh, but we benefit a lot, not from the government side. We benefit a lot from the opposite side, the opposite side who, uh, after getting out of those uh, violence, aggressive natures, you hear something that if a smart leader here, you can use it, and you don't need to go 
You just listen to your social media because they air their differences every day. Every day. From classroom, from their own room, you know, from a private room. You know, uh, every day they, 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 they tell you, you just listen to them enough. I'm just quite shocked that most of my friends who are on the opposite side never listen to the government at all. I asked, have you listened to some of the radio stations that are very aggressive? Uh, that message is like, come to Chulai Long Gone. Uh, take, uh, take down the Prime Minister's wife who's teaching at Chulai Long Gone and bring that kid, rape her, you see, and, and make sure a piece of it uh, is sad when we do that. Uh, I, I, I asked my colleague, have you listened to that radio station that you also keep interview? And she said, no, I don't have time. I said, listen to it first and benefit from that. See? So I think if the government listen enough to benefit from the other side, I think uh, we'll do maybe just OK, I don't know. Uh, but it takes not only the leader, it takes the whole system of the uh, parliamentary, you know, it takes the whole system of bureaucracy, it takes the whole system of civil society to listen to each other. I'm not even sure this Tamasa people on the ground listen to each other enough or not. Obviously, maybe not. But people on the stage have listened. People in the prison cells next to each other from the opposite end have listened to each other. And majority of the Thai people on August 7 have listened to each other. Enough for us to go on, but I'm not so sure. Uh, this new young generation, Ajahn Sujit, was hoping for uh, be enough to, uh, to work with this uh, still aggressive. Uh, and, and in fact, those aggressive people are coming from injustice that press upon them you see, for years and years. You need to listen to them carefully, but tell them to cool and calm down and work with the system. But that's not easy. Um, just sort of following on from there. Okay, the question is, is there just a veneer of stability that we're really seeing, that really underneath there's so much churn going on, and you know, if the NCPO move to take you know, the lid off, suddenly there's lots of steam and they get, they get nervous, they put the, the lid back on. The other point that's just been made about the change in the economy in the last 30 years, um, uh, you know, there's a new middle class in the in the north who who think completely different to the middle class in Bangkok. Um, you know, the, the technology, you know, it's it's moved so much uh, forward, and and so many people have felt in terms of the political structures that they're sort of wanting to go back to the future. This is what we're talking about, the premier. Um, but it, it, in fact, it, it's a completely new era. I mean, how? How do you direct all that new new energy uh, going uh, going forward? Thank you. And then, as you say, we're seeing some stability, but it is is it kind of a superficial false precarious kind of stability? Uh, in fact, uh, perhaps is there some volatility underneath? As you said, what you see is not what you get. Um, I also want to just add here: is this after the referendum? Is this Thailand's? Uh, chance, to what extent is it a, an opportunity now to, to move on, to bridge the divide? Uh, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the, the referendum results. Even in the Northeast, you know, in 2007, uh, turnout was 57%. The rejection of the Constitution in 2007 was 62%. 62%. And uh, the North, uh, the, the other regions approved, more or less. This time, uh, even the rejection rate in the Northeast is just 51%. And the other regions, especially the South, is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly supportive of the Constitution. So is this a way of, uh, are we seeing the, the toxic influence being diluted, or uh, how do we see it? And can we see it, to what extent is this a kind of a, a chance for Thailand to bridge the divide and, and move on? As I did first, we'll come down the road. Well, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, I agree uh, with Ron that uh, our society is more complex than during the brain period. We have a large middle class spreading around outside Bangkok in the Konkan, in Kora, uh, in Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, and, and, and also in the South as well. So uh, become a more, more complexity. And you cannot say that uh, we have a very real solid middle class who share the same view. No, I don't think so. Uh, because uh, the middle class in the Northeast might, might might, might be thinking of something while in Bangkok, might be different. So let me come to the second point that 
the diversity in political belief seems to be uh, quite more and more obvious. In the, in the last uh, uh, three or four decades, our core values, our political core values, still very much conservatism, conservative, right? But now you have a, a quite a whole range of a spectrum of political belief from either a very uh, rightist, you see, a very con uh, right who, who always who preserve everything uh, to the uh, right middle and uh, right central, central left, uh, and, uh, and also left. So, to you, or you can have a, a very progressive and liberal and uh, uh, conservative. And this kind of thing, you see, seem to be, uh, seem to be the nature of a more or less political, politically mature society. Thailand is becoming in that direction. And because of globalization, because of the influence of the internet, social media, so on, so forth. So people seem to entertain quite different viewpoints in particular issue. So the question is, you see, we cannot establish some sort of reconciliations, although a number of majority people seem to be for the NCPO, seem to agree with the, uh, with the peace and stability. That's some there, but there are some radical movements who want a radical change in our society. Although at the moment they are minority, they're quite minority, but you cannot overlook them. So the point is how to reconcile these people within, within the, the, the system. We agree that the system must be changed, but my point of view is it has to be changed uh, uh, gradually. I don't want everything changed uh, abruptly. You see, so change gradually in system. And I mean, the both the social, economic, or political system. You see, they have to be changed gradually. So, so how how could we accommodate them? And and to accommodate these people, how to accommodate the diversity, difference? You cannot suppress them. But they try to convince them that what the country need most is not yours idea. Is my policy. In our policy, is more convincible, con con uh, convincingly uh, good rather than yours. So this is the thing that we are doing in in the in the democratic democratic atmosphere. So this so it need a very rather broad-minded governments uh, uh, to run, and at the same time, we have to strike the so-called balance. This is my final words to see strike by land between stability and freedom. Of course, can we allow more freedom at the expense of stability? Or can we allow stability at the, at the expense of freedom? We need a kind of balance. And this kind of balance we, we have been experienced for so for so de uh, several hundred years, you see. And it changed over time. This kind of balance change over time, and we need to rebalance it again. Thank you. So, thank you, Kavachan. So it's about kind of uh, getting the balance right between uh, order and freedom uh, through uh, reconciliation, uh, persuasion, uh, and changing from within. <coughs> Thanks for the question. I'm not quite sure I can answer, but uh, I'd like to highlight that uh, during the past, Two decades, uh, Thailand has grown out of the so-called uh, middle class who only in Bangkok, but we have more uh, new middle class in, in rural areas. And probably we, uh, what we call uh, rural area in the past, have gone now. So uh, the rise of new middle class in the uh, urban rural in the provincial uh, probably uh, gives up some give us some hint that. Probably the project of reconciliation, we have to look closer to the political landscape that has changed drastically. Uh, we're talking about vote buying, we're talking about uh, 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 the corrupt politicians, but uh, the, grow, the growth of new uh, rural uh, middle class perhaps challenge 
such kind of concept the, of the, the world buying and, and probably uh, we, we have come far beyond that, that point. But uh, what we look for or to in the future is a more effective uh, government, of course. But on the other hand, we also look forward to see a more open for participation uh, to conduct our own future, not only from one side as uh, we are working on now. And uh, looking from this new terrain of Thai political landscape, perhaps uh, we, we should look uh, at our younger generations. Um, I just heard from my friend, uh, um, he's a, a play, uh, he, he has a, a play at Bangkok Art and Cultural Center yesterday. The mil military official informs him that uh, they will go and observe his play tonight at Bangkok Art and Cultural Center. This shows a lot that uh, not only uh, our Facebook has been monitored, but also uh, in the terms of art and culture as well. And how can we push forward the project of reconciliation? I'm not quite sure. Uh, perhaps the NCPO should be more careful and more open to uh, differences, right? I, I think this is the, the need of our society to, to allow people to, to have more public space, to, to allow people to, to share their future. They, they want to stay, they want to speak about their future more than ever, but it's been 10 years that been, uh, we've been trapped in the conflict. And of course, it's, it's not that easy. We, we, we would l love to stay away from violence, of course, but how can we get out of that situation uh, uh, for the fact that uh, the, the current and future governments still uh, 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 try to, in many ways, control the freedom of expression? And I think this is the, the, the big stance and boys from my younger colleagues say that they, they were born in the 80s. Of course, they grown up with the, the regime, so-called semi-democratic uh, uh, government. But they also uh, enjoy the time of economic prosperity. They enjoy freedom. But now, all the things collapse. Uh, uh, some of my friends, younger friends in their 20s uh, have to go to military court every day. I mean, every single day to observe uh, the case or to, to uh, uh, be uh, 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 an observer of the cases. It's, it's not that easy. So I, I, I expect that the, the NCPO would uh, look closer into this matter for the, for the sake of reconciliation in, in the short run. But for the long run, I, I expect that, that there would be more uh, viable uh, structure for people to access to uh, uh, the future policy of government too. This is very important uh, according to the 20-year strategic plan of Thai government. Thank you, Lapatan. So the imperative of uh, having rights and freedom, freedoms and rights, uh, political space, I think through um, participation, <coughs> inclusion, and that the road ahead should be inclusive, and inclusiveness uh, is paramount. Ron, I like to try to answer your civility question in three different uh, ways, short, very short. Uh, n number one, I don't think we can turn back the clock. Uh, I don't think we can set zero. Ron, if you know anyone who can turn back the clock, uh, tell me. Uh, I like to restart my teaching career you know, soon, you know, at Chula, I'm just about to retire. So I don't think we can turn back the clock. Uh, I, I don't think we can even say zero. It reminds me of the year zero. Our neighbor was trying to, to do in it with disaster. So that's number one. Uh, uh, you want to join me? You retire soon? Okay. Uh, second, uh, uh, I don't think we can return to 1980s too. Uh, I think with the social media, with the civil society, with the educate the public uh, with the forces that are coming up uh, who would be who would want to return to that period but a new maybe different kind of you know accommodation that's my number two uh, I think we need to accommodate all forces I think that is very clear and I think uh, accommodation to these forces will not be easy uh, 
majority of the Thai people have not benefited from the economy in the past few decades. We need to address that. You cannot deny people outside of Bangkok about uh, about that. You cannot deny people outside of London, you know, on the benefits of joining EU. You cannot do that. That's a lesson learned for us. Uh, I think we know that too. Uh, so that's a second. You need to accommodate that. But the successful accommodation uh, will depend on how those forces can accept compromise. I think that's the key. So far, that's uh, that is a, a concern. Uh, the culture of compromise has not been uh, uh, cultivated among certain quarters. You know, they see just only one side of the coin. Uh, so, uh, lastly, I think uh, in order to have a compromise, you need to have a capacity to keep peace. As long as you have a capacity to keep peace, I think we can make a compromise uh, in the next few years. Uh, uh, judging from the current administration, I think they are fully aware of these uh, uh, I think, uh, 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 points and concerns. Uh, I hope they make the right decision as all Thais hope, uh, and I hope they continue to listen uh, uh, to different uh, voices. Uh, although uh, I sorry, it's uh, uh, on 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 these uh, issues uh, of, uh, of of public space, uh, I think we need to engage more. To, how to how to uh, how to manage this public space in the next few months? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last word from you. Thank you, Mr. Titinan. During the drafting of the constitution i have a chance to visit uh, different places and listen to different forms uh, i i told myself that uh, i i think i know thai society but when i have a chance to visit different places different provinces listen to a uh, different uh, group of people. I told myself that I know very little about my own countries. And I, I think uh, this forum, uh, one thing that I, I get from this forum is the, the concern that uh, you have uh, from the question and answer from uh, the uh, speech made by uh, us, and I, I think uh, in in the next uh, ten months, what I have to do as a member of the Constitution Drafting Committee is to to draft the Organic Law. Uh, we, I, I think I can say that we uh, will try our best to listen. And uh, try to uh, do our best uh, for our own countries and put the right thing in the organic law. But I also want to urge uh, you, your colleague, uh, to follow up with uh, what's going on in the organic law, not by listening to the people or from, from the media, but the best thing is to, to read it by yourself. As for the Constitution, I, I think uh, not, I, I'm not quite sure 65 million people, uh, how, many, how many of them read every section of the Constitution. So I, I think uh, this is uh, quite important for our, our countries. When Ajahn Titinan uh, concluded that what I say is about law making, that is correct. But making the law is very important. And making the law for the best interest of the countries is also very, very important for the countries. Don't treat it as making the law, but making the good law for our countries. So that's what uh, I would like to uh, and uh, 
my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's a way of wrapping up. I think the next flashpoint, uh, ongoing flashpoint, will be the issues of rights and freedoms, rights and freedoms, and you know potential violations and so on. We, we see that in the news a lot. And then in the longer term, uh, the flashpoint will be the, the next poll and the next prime minister. Uh, that's when we'll have some uh, some movement. Uh, I think at the end of it, uh, it's really incumbent now. The onus is on the the military government and the NCPO. And you know, they have been so far on course, uh, but uh, they must uh, stay on course. And I think that the, uh, the risk, the biggest risk is, uh, is can be self-imposed, is the risk of uh, uh, you know, abuse of power and the kind of uh, uh, wrongdoings we've seen in the past, uh, military rule. But so far, this one uh, is on track. Uh, let's hope they stay that way. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Uh, please help me uh, applauding, uh, showing some gratitude to the speakers. Uh, thanks very much.